Meet Amy and Carly. Amy is a College of DuPage graduate, now attending Johns Hopkins University. Carly is a College of DuPage freshman. Both have lived with mental illness, but have very different stories. While different from one another, their stories are the same as many of their peers. I realized something was different because I was just sad all the time. I was basically like what you imagine depression would be. I was moping around school. I didn't talk. I just didn't enjoy anything. I didn't want to do anything anymore. I wasn't interested in school. And I was diagnosed with major depression and social anxiety. Before COVID hit, uh, I was in high school. I would say sophomore year. I was so happy. I had a really solid group of friends. My grades were phenomenal, all A's and B's. Um, I really enjoyed going to school, especially connecting with my teachers. That's always been something that's really important to me in high school is just building those good relationships because those are the people you learn from. And then COVID hit and they were like, yeah, well, you'll be back after spring break, but it never ended up happening. And then they switched to school being online. So, So there I am, just lonely, confused, just not in a good state at all, feeling horrible about myself, just very insecure. I try to hide it as best as I could, um, but at the same time I was hoping like someone in my family would notice. And my mom, she sort of did, she asked me a few times if I was okay, if I was depressed, but I just told her I was okay. I'm not exactly sure why. Um, I didn't want to worry, worry her, I guess. But I did have a lot of visits to the doctor because of physical pain, which is one of the symptoms of depression. And the doctor was the one to figure it out. Like after the fourth visit in that year, he was just like, okay, I'm gonna have you fill out this questionnaire. And I did, and then he said, yep, it's depression. Exactly like that. I had no motivation to do anything. I was actually diagnosed with anxiety. They put me on some anxiety medication. Um, I got diagnosed with an eating disorder too, so it was just a lot going on in that time for me. It was a lot mental health wise, just mentally, I just wasn't completely there. I was going through a lot of difficult times with my family, with my relationship, with everything. I was just so down on myself. I just didn't feel good. I wasn't happy at all. And my eating disorder really, it actually, it really started to catch up to me when I was at work because I just wouldn't eat anything all day. And then I would go to work, and then one day at work, I fainted. So my manager was like, okay, like I want you to go to the doctor and get this checked out. So she honestly pushed me a lot too. I wouldn't just say it's all me, but I did know that it was the right thing to do. In the beginning, my treatment was quite simple. It was just, okay, we're gonna try therapy, let's talk for an hour, um, and let's see how that helps. And then after that, they decided that it'd be best if I got a, a psychiatrist to start me on some medication, and my mom and I agreed. So we started with that course of treatment. It was hard to say that I think I need help, for sure. I was just feeling very down about myself. I didn't want to go outside. I didn't want to do anything, really. So I was talking to my mom about it, and I was like, Mom, like I think I need to go get this checked out. I need to go do something about this. I think it's okay not to be okay because no one is ever okay. We're all dealing with things. It's just that nobody knows about them. And yeah, some people are able to manage it, push through it, but it doesn't mean that they're stronger than those who can't. These next 10 years of our lives are literally the most important next 10 years because this is when we choose what we want to do and we chase our dreams and we save up the money to move out and we get married and we have kids and we start a family. It's just all in these next 10 years that there's, there's just so much leaning on them. And it really, it makes me nervous, it makes me anxious, but it also just makes me so excited. Cause I just want to get out there. I just want to live my dreams and live my life and do what I want to do. And I'm just very, very excited to really just start my life and make that step and just go for it. As you can see, there is a lot of pressure on college students. For some, like Amy, it can become overwhelming. Um, I was hospitalized uh, for suicidal ideation. So um, 
I guess, uh, from talking to my social worker at school, um, she would tell me like, oh, I think it's time for you to be hospitalized because the thoughts or the depression just got too bad. Tragically, that was not Amy's only hospitalization. My original intention was not to um, uh, hurt myself or end my life. It was just to uh, take some pills, my anxiety pills. Uh, I took like the rest of the bottle just because I wanted to feel relaxed, but that lowered my inhibitions. I, I guess the first thing that I wanted to do without thinking about anything else was just to go into the medicine cabinet and take um, all the pills that I could. So that's exactly what I did. I was drowsy and I wasn't thinking straight and I called my brother to tell him what I had done and he called the ambulance for me. And then after they put me in the ambulance, I don't remember anything from that. I just remember waking up like three days later. <laughs> With treatment, both Carly and Amy are now doing well and moving forward. But getting started on the path to recovery was not easy. I would say therapy over the past few years, six years, it has helped me become a better person. I'm able to cope better. I am more optimistic. I can reach my goals. I can do my, um, live my dreams. I just have to get there and I just have to make the first step. So I think the biggest thing would be just taking the first step. When I started COD, um, it was after my most recent hospitalization. Um, I don't know, I guess I found that joy in school again. And I don't know, I just, all of a sudden I had goals again, had motivation. So I worked hard here. Amy went on to graduate from College of DuPage and now attends the prestigious Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. She is still being treated for depression and anxiety, but now has a new perspective. Just because I require all this extra help and treatment doesn't make me weak. In fact, I think it makes me stronger. And I think a lot of kids need to hear that. There's nothing wrong with them. Their, their brain just needs a little bit of care and compassion. So if you just make that first step, you just make it known, I promise you that there are people in your life or you can find people in your life that will help you, that do love you, and they will get you through it. So all you have to do is just say something, do something, make that first step, and everything else will fall into place, I promise. If you are thinking of suicide or hurting yourself, dial 988 immediately. The Suicide and Crisis Helpline provides free, confidential support, helpless waiting 24 hours a day, every day.